So I chose these pictures of Yosemite National Park for maximum impact. We've got a lot of snow in 2012, and then you can see in 2015 hardly any snow at all. And part of the reason I did this is to demonstrate the fragility of snowpack to a change in temperature. So a small change in temperature can really have a large effect on the amount of snow that, that accumulates in our mountains in the western United States. And this change in snowpack results in changes in water supply uh, that affect our water use for all the different users. So uh, researchers at WSU have estimated that the change in snowpack due to temperature by 2050 will be a 20 to 50 percent decline in the amount of snowpack accumulated and it will be shifted a full month earlier in the season. So what may have come as runoff in April now is going to come in March. This means that we have to make hard choices about allocating water to fish, whether we release the water in time for fish to be able to spawn, or allocating water for, uh, for power, letting the water run through the dams, or saving that water and, and letting agriculturalists use it in June and July when they most need it. This isn't just a Western US problem. This is also a problem globally. We have globally increases in, in uh, demand for water and needs by different users, and we have uh, shifts in climate that are causing supplies to change. And so my research focuses on uh, that essential question of how do we allocate water when we've got water supplies that are shifting as a result of climate. And it has three different phases. So first, I look at uh, how the shift in, in climate is going to affect agriculture in the West. So in the West, we only get about 20 centimeters of rain on average per year. And that is, is just really not enough to grow most crops. So think about uh, wine in California, um, almond milk, avocados, which are my special uh, favorite food. Um, and with the exception of the Palouse and growing wheat, generally we need some kind of water source with which, with, with which we can irrigate. Uh, so deciding who gets that and how that's going to affect the, ir the irrigation and the farmers that, that can uh, use that water is a very important aspect for, um, for Western agriculture. And a big part of deciding who gets that water is the, the framework of laws and regulation for water rights. So when we were settling, when the West was being settled 100, 100 years ago, uh, people were given water rights on a first come first serve basis. So you showed up, you got your water, and that was it. Over the course of history for the past 100 years, we've evolved a set of rights that really uh, <clears throat> determines who gets that water, but also makes it difficult and leads to some challenges in terms of allocating that water or making changes now. And so one big question is, how can we change policy today to make the best use of water today? Thank you.